Unfortunately, these are dramatic times. Europe might very well be on its way to destruction. The Europe you know from a tourist point of view, of the Europe you know from the stories of your parents, of friends, of families, is on the verge of collapsing. We are now witnessing profound changes that will forever alter Europe's destiny and might send our continent in what Ronald Reagan once called a thousand years of darkness. The takeover of Europe is part of the global fight of Islam for world domination. Islam is a political ideology. Islam heart lies at the Quran and the Quran is a book that calls for hatred, that calls for violence, that calls for murder, that calls for war, that calls for submission. And the Quran asks and orders Muslims to kill non-Muslims. The Quran describes Jews as monkeys and pigs. <laughs> The Quran is Allah's personal words, which leaves no room at all for interpretation. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, there is no such thing as a moderate Islam. Sure, there are moderate Muslims, but there is no moderate Islam. Muhammad was a warlord and in establishing Islam he preached violence, he preached the slaughter of non-Muslims. He took part in 78 battles and slaughtered the Jewish tribe of Banu Quraiza. And Muhammad said, and I quote, I have been ordered by Allah to fight against people until they testify that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. The purest joy in Islam is to kill and to be killed. And ladies and gentlemen, Muhammad's behavior and the Quran inspire until today jihadists from all over the world to slaughter innocent people like in Washington, in New York, in Madrid, in London, in Amsterdam and in Mumbai. The truth is that Islam has always attempted to conquer Europe and it has done so for centuries. The Christian city of Constantinople fell as we all know in the 15th century and now in the 21st century Islam is trying again. This time not with armies but through the application of Al-Hijra, the Islamic doctrine of migration. This doctrine Al-Hijra is based on the example of Muhammad who as you know migrated from Mecca to Medina. And the Libyan leader Muhammad al-Qaddafi said and I quote him we have today 50 million Muslims in Europe. There are signs that Allah will grant them victory in Europe without swords, without guns, without conquest. Those 50 million Muslims of Europe will turn Europe into a Muslim continent within a few decades. For the first time in world history, there are dozens of millions of Muslims living far outside the Dar al-Islam, the Islamic world. And that, that poses an enormous threat to us in the West. Ladies and gentlemen, the Al-Hijra may, may be the end of the Western civilization as we know it. My country is becoming, is in the process of becoming Hollandistan, as Europe, as Badio stated correctly, is becoming Eurabia. And let me give you a few examples. Only 12% of the German Muslims see themselves more Germans than Muslims. And churches all over Europe, churches are emptying out, whereas mosques are shooting up like mushrooms. Medieval phenomena as burqas, as honor killings, as 
female genital mutilation are becoming more and more prevalent. An hour before this footage was recorded, her father had tried to murder her. A month later, he succeeded. Banaz Mahmoud was just 20 years old. She just wanted to get out of it, be a free person. Be allowed to get out of the house when she wanted to. You know, not be locked up and be told what to do. But that attitude was too much for her father. He beat his daughters with his shoe and called them whores just for wearing makeup. When he discovered Banaz had a secret boyfriend, Mamod and his brother Ari decided to murder them both. On New Year's Eve 2005, here in South Wimbledon, passers-by found Banaz running through the street, covered in blood and pleading for help. Banaz made her way to a cafe down here on the main road and the police were called. PC Angela Corns was the first officer in attendance. Now, PC Corns was unsympathetic when Banaz told her how she'd been plied with brandy and how her father had then tried to kill her. Instead, PC Corns wrote in her notebook that Banaz was being melodramatic. Banaz Mahmoud was strangled in her own home, her body crammed into a large suitcase. It was then transported north to Birmingham and buried in a hole five feet deep in the back garden of this house. It was three months before her body was found. Sharia statements, Sharia testaments, Sharia mortgages, Sharia schools, Sharia banks, yes, even in the United Kingdom, Sharia courts and even Sharia Barbie dolls. We all have it in Europe today. And then I have not even mentioned that, for instance, in Denmark, in the capital of Denmark, Copenhagen, 70% of the crimes are committed by Muslims. Ladies and gentlemen, we let in the Trojan horse. And allow me to give you a few examples that is also happening not only in Europe but also in your country in the United States. Muslim taxi drivers in Minneapolis airport have already refused more than 5,000 passengers because they were carrying alcohol. Muslim students are demanding separate camping housing. Muslim women are demanding separate hours in gyms and in swimming pools. Schools already here in the United States have been banned, have been banning Halloween and Christmas celebrations. Schools are taking pork off their cafeteria menus to avoid Muslim students, to offend them. Ladies and gentlemen, please be aware that everything I mention is just the beginning. If things continue like this, you will have the same problems as we currently have in Europe. If we do not stop the Islamization, we will lose everything. We will lose our identity. We will lose our culture, our democratic constitutional state, our freedom, and indeed our civilization. And in Europe, we are already losing the right of free speech, the right to criticize Islam. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one Western country that has been forced to fight the forces of jihad for its values since the beginning, the very first day of its existence, and that is the state of Israel. I love Israel. However, in Europe, being pro-America and being pro-Israel makes you almost an endangered species. But Israel, ladies and gentlemen, is a beacon of light in an area, the Middle East, that is pitch black everywhere else. Israel is a Western democracy. A very important point I want to make for you. The so-called Middle East conflict is not about land at all. It is not a territorial conflict. It's a conflict about ideologies. It's a battle between Islam and freedom. It's not about some land in Gaza or Judea and Samaria. To Islam, the whole of Israel is occupied territory. They see Jerusalem and Haifa as settlements too. Islam forces Israel to fight. And Israel is not just fighting for itself. Israel is fighting for all of us. We all are Israel. Israel fights for the entire West.